In our previous videos, we've talked about classes versus objects, methods, variables, and variable types. At this point, it might not be very clear what is a class versus an object. In other words, the line between one versus another might not be very clear. So we're going to try to show some of the benefits of object-oriented programming in this video. First of all, let's focus on line number 30 here. And you see that we have vehicle my vehicle equals new vehicle. And I want to describe what this is. First of all, my vehicle is a variable. We can choose our name within certain parameters. We know that we can't have spaces and certain symbols, uh, things like that. The variable must have a name. It must also have a type. In this case, the type is vehicle, where vehicle is the class that we've written here. Now, on the right side, we have a constructor call, and a constructor call is creating a new object. But I see it's, it's a bit tricky to tell what's an object versus a class, because at this point, we have a class called vehicle, and we have exactly one variable holding an object of type vehicle. So it's like, wait, I don't understand. Is this a class or an object? And honestly, if you use those words classes and object interchangeably, uh, at an early stage, that's not a problem. It's understandable. A lot of people do that. The value of object-oriented programming and the value of being able to make a variable where the variable type is a class and then assigning a new object to that variable, the value of that is you can have multiple variables of that type and these variables are all treated independently. In other words, I can do this. I can say vehicle, your vehicle, equals new vehicle. Now let me ask you, when I drive my car, it will decrease the gallons of gas that are in my car. But will it decrease the gallons of gas that are in your car? It certainly should not. Uh, my car should be treated separately from yours. And that's exactly what we're doing in this case, is we're making two different variables. So I will say here, create an object of type vehicle. This object is different from my vehicle and will have its own independent values. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some values into your vehicle and I'll go ahead and just hard code them for the moment. So I'll say your vehicle dot set gallons of gas. Let's say you have eight gallons of gas in your vehicle. Your vehicle, and I notice that I start to type the variable name control space, and that means will auto-complete that for me. Your vehicle dot set miles per gallon. Let's set that to 20. And then let's say your vehicle, and then we'll say set odometer, and we'll say 30,000 miles on the odometer. Okay, now, We'll keep it like that. What I want to demonstrate is that if I change the values of my vehicle, it will not affect the values in your vehicle. Let me put just a comment up here. Initialize the values of your vehicle. Okay. Now, I'm going to enhance the system out print line. I'm going to give it a title. Remember, SOUT tab. That give us, gives us the, the uh, syntax for system out print line, which is going to print a value out to the console, which in our case is this little output tab down here. So I'm going to say my vehicle. Notice I'm just giving it a title. Okay, let me add a few more system out print lines for your vehicle. So your vehicle. Okay, and system out print line. And then we'll say your vehicle dot two string. Okay, let me duplicate this and put this down below. So I scroll down towards the bottom, and you see that we have uh, an existing line where we're printing the state of my vehicle after we insert its gallons of gas, miles per gallon, odometer reading, and a distance to go. I'm simply going to print the state of your vehicle after that as well. And once again, I'll put a little title here so we know which is which. Uh, my vehicle. Okay. And save, and now let's go ahead and run the program. 
Okay, first of all, notice that my vehicle starts with zero gallons of gas and zero miles on the odometer. Your vehicle starts with eight gallons of gas and 30,000 miles on the odometer. Now I'm getting prompted, so I'm going to say enter gallons of gas, and this is for my vehicle, not your vehicle. I'll give it a different value than what we have in your vehicle so we can tell them apart. We see I'm going to put in 10 gallons of gas. We'll say 25 miles per gallon, again, a different value than we used for your vehicle. And odometer, 10,000 miles on the odometer. Distance to travel, we're going to say 100. After entering all of this, we see that my vehicle state has changed. The word state in programming means the value of its attributes or the value of its fields. You see that my vehicle has six gallons of gas and 10,100 miles on the odometer, where it started with 10 gallons of gas and 10,000 miles on the odometer. But the more important part is notice that your vehicle has not changed. Your vehicle still has 8 gallons of gas and 30,000 miles on the odometer. So in this case, we have two objects of the same class, kind of like having two different Big Macs. Big Mac would be a class, but the Big Mac you're physically eating, the Big Mac that's physically in your hand, is an object of that class Big Mac. You consuming that Big, Big Mac does not affect your neighbor's Big Mac, which maybe uh, he or she is eating fries first. So these things are independent. In object-oriented programming, this is very valuable because we can have not just one or two objects, but thousands of objects. We can have as many as we want. Now, obviously, we don't want to have too many or we'll, eating up, we'll end up eating up too much memory, but it does give us a lot of flexibility in the way that we can represent things like inventory, maybe some cars, uh, as I have here, or, or uh, stores. It could be uh, maybe we're a retailer, we're representing stores. Maybe it's a game, we're representing players in a game, something like that. Each of these things will be an independent object uh, that has independent variables that will change independently. And that's the value of object-oriented programming. The other nice part of object-oriented programming is that we're taking different primitives, or could be more complex objects, and we're binding them together in one envelope, in this case called vehicle. And that is essentially a class. A class gives us an opportunity to take things that are related to each other, in this case related because they all belong to either my vehicle or your vehicle and put them together in a nice package uh, so that they don't get separated we don't confuse what these values are so that's an overview of objects and classes thank you